Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Coach the Coach Radio. Brought to you by the Business Radio X Ambassador Program. The no-cost business development strategy for coaches who want to spend more time serving local business clients and less time selling them. Go to brxambassador.com to learn more. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Coach & Coach Radio, and this is going to be a good one. Today we have with us Eileen Dillon with Emotional Mastery for Life. Welcome, Eileen. Thank you, Lee. Nice to be here. Well, I'm excited to learn what you're up to. Tell us a little bit about Emotional Mastery for Life. How are you serving folks? Well, I'm currently developing a um, an online course, uh, but I also have written a book, Emotions in Motion, and I uh, consult with individuals and groups to help bring emotional mastery to the world. I'm on a quest to get everybody masterful uh, regarding the emotions in their lives. So now how did you get into this line of work? Um, did something occur that you said, I think I'm going to have to help people work through emotions? Uh, yes, yeah, something occurred. Um First of all, I have been a psychotherapist for 50 years, and I was already a psychotherapist when emotions in me erupted uh, based on a situation I had in my life in my late 20s, and uh, all this anger started coming out. It just was flowing everywhere, and I, you know, my, what had happened is my husband had left me and my 10-month-old daughter so the anger that came out was going on to my child, and I wasn't at all happy about that. And I went searching in, you know, back to my graduate school, the University of California at Berkeley, to their library. This was pre-internet days. And I found out there were no answers to my questions, such as what causes anger and what can you do about it and can you get rid of it and why is it so explosive? And a lot of questions we actually still have. And the reason there weren't any answers is because uh, social scientists didn't separate out anger, for example, from uh, mental health issues such as schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. They just said, well, and anger occurs in, with schizophrenia. And so I set out on a quest to find my own answers, and it took me about 15 or 20 years, but I did it. I now consider myself a recovered angry person. So now when you're talking about emotions, are you talking about um, all emotions or is it primarily anger or fear? Like, are there certain emotions that are kind of more, I guess, impactful than others? Well, there are. The ones that are uh, often most impactful are the ones that we hold back on. When we, when we hold emotions inside of us, they tend to grow. But the interesting thing, that, and, they, and then that's what makes them explosive. Uh, so the interesting thing was that the more I learned about anger, the more I realized that all emotions essentially follow the same process. Um, I came to understand our earth as a giant school, Lee. And we, what happens is we have experiences that gives us an opportunity to learn something. And with those experiences come emotions. Now, emotions are energy. We call them emotions, emo energy in motion. Um, and, and so they're energy. And what we've learned to do over generations is to block that energy from moving. But it works just as if you tried to block water from moving. It builds up pressure. It seeks a way out. It's constantly agitating to get moving again. And that's what causes us human beings problems. Uh, so I, at first I dealt with anger and then I realized that all emotions follow the same patterns. They're all energy. You can't create them. You can't destroy them. Uh, they need to move. And also every emotion has a message for us. For example, loneliness. Most of us think that we get lonely because we are alone. But actually, you can feel lonely in a crowd or in a marriage. 
So the issue of loneliness is not being alone. It's that we have more of our energy going out than coming back in. We're not being loving enough to ourselves is another way of seeing that. And so once you know what each emotion is telling you, and I have 12 emotions listed in my book, Emotions in Motion, uh, once you know what it's telling you, then you can work with it to resolve the lesson that has come up in your experience. And that's the way we move through, um, through life. So I see emotions as messengers and tools for helping us to navigate our lives. And then once you kind of understand them, then you can unlock them and then kind of manage them better? Well, you see, you're using the word manage. I use mastery because manage is like corralling them. And what I've noticed with management is you have to go back all the time and redo it. And with mastery, you don't. You, uh, you, can, you develop, you can never get rid of emotions, but what you can do is reduce them to a small place in your life so that they come up and you go, oh, anger's coming up. That's giving me this message over here. How can I use that to deal with this life situation? Once you use it, then you turn it loose and it moves on. The energy moves. If you don't do that, and we all have these experiences. What happens is we go through the same issues over and over and over again, maybe with a different cast of characters. And every time we hit that same issue again, it's a harsher, uh, more difficult lesson. And that's the interesting thing to me. I've found as a psychotherapist that most of us don't like to change. So we wait until the pain of where we are gets to be so great, we think it couldn't be any worse if we make sh uh, make a shift or learn the lesson. Uh, but interestingly, if we make a habit of learning the lessons, then that pain doesn't build up and we don't repeat those patterns. In fact, we change almost immediately when we learn the lesson. So it's kind of a light bulb moment you, yeah, I think you could see that, but it's a, it's a whole system light bulb. It's like, oh, that's it. Okay. All right. We've done that. We've, you know, like with loneliness, let's go back to loneliness. Um, if I start feeling lonely now, I travel the, the uh, North America in my RV <clears throat> and I'm alone. I do have a little dog with me, but I travel alone. And um, people go, oh, doesn't that take courage? Doesn't that, aren't you lonely? Well, I'm not lonely. Now, that doesn't mean that loneliness never comes up. It means that when it comes up, I go, oh, I have more energy going out than coming in. How can I bring energy in? The best way to bring energy in is to do something we have a talent for. But, and we can also do things like go for a walk or read or dance or whatever it is that that brings energy to to us and isn't putting it out in the world or to other people and we will then move right through any loneliness uh so if you call that a light bulb moment then that's what it is now how did you kind of um land on the 12 emotions uh well <laughs> <laughs> Very frankly, my publisher was going, don't make this book too long. <laughs> so, uh, and also, they're, they're the most, uh, you know, the ones that we encounter most often. They're guilt and fear and hurt and loneliness and um, uh, what else have I got? Stress and anxiety and anger um, So and, and jealousy. They're the ones that we encounter most often in our lives. Uh, so another thing I would mention here, Lee, is we tend to think of some of those emotions as negative emotions. There's no such thing. An emotion is an emotion. It's like calling water negative, you know, uh, which I guess we could make it negative. And we can make emotions negative. Uh, and the way we do that is we hold on to them. We don't let them move. And every time we hold on to them, they grow in power and they grow in strength and they agitate to move so they can cause us problems. Uh, anger, which I endured for a few years, 
anger held on to, well, first of all, it can destroy your self-esteem. It can get in the way of your success. It can make you mentally or physically ill. I mean, it's very powerful to keep anger inside of us. And yet most of us do thinking that we're controlling it or managing it. Now, I know uh, you didn't mention this one, but how would you kind of um, deal with, say, happiness is the emotion you're trying to master or joy that some the people that are chasing, you know, th- that that um, ephemeral happiness? Yes. Well, that's an that's an interesting question. Um, uh, whatever we pay attention to we feed energy to, and we tend to become. So if you're not happy, uh, then you need, I, I just I just reached uh, Amazon bestseller status with a book on happiness, of which I'm a collaborative author. And, and we're all writing about happiness. You pay attention to happiness. You, uh, you allow it to come. Most of us are forcing things all the time. You know, I have this goal. I've got to get there. What's in the way? What's the problem? When you focus on the problem, it grows. When you focus on where you want to go and what you'll be like when you get there, then that grows. So if you wish to be happy and you want to master happiness, then you focus on what will I be like when I'm happy? What makes me happy? How could I be happy in this particular situation? Is this thing that I'm doing bringing me happiness? So you focus there instead of, oh my goodness, I'm so unhappy. What's the matter with me? How did I get so unhappy? I've been happy, unhappy for so many years. That doesn't work. That just brings you more unhappiness. Do you find that a lot of this is because um, people have maybe uh, the expectation of what life will be like when that future goal is there and when they get the goal it isn't how they imagine it to be so then that kind of disparity creates the stress or the kind of negative emotion that you were talking about earlier yes i i think you're certainly accurate with that uh lee um the the interesting thing is that most of us have learned not to live in the time in which we're living What I mean by that is the only time we have power is in the present. And so, but when we're saying, oh, I want happiness, we're trying to go to the future. If you focus on happiness and say, am I being happy right now? What would bring me happiness right now? And you move there, then you have a chance of being happy. But otherwise, you're looking at some other place and you have no power to get there. So it's more like involving, we need to be in the world while we're here and living it and knowing that happiness is there. That's the thing I've learned about emotions. We don't have to work so hard for them. They're actually very simple. You know, all we have to do is focus on them, welcome them, uh, identify their message, work with them, right? Now, it's very easy. Well, I mean, it it sounds easy. It's just in the heat, heat of the moment, it may not be as easy for a lot of folks. Is um, Do you find that a lot of people struggle with life because they are either spending too much time in the future or in the past and they're not in the, in the present? Absolutely. That is true. I, I would... I, let me just start back up for a minute and say, let's call it simple instead of easy working with emotions. The process is simple. Sometimes it's painful because we've built things up or because we uh, run into our own fear or blockages or beliefs. Um, But yes, people, you know, we need to live in the present. Now, if we look at COVID, COVID has brought us, a lot of us, pretty much to a standstill. And then all we did was sit with our own feelings and we had to feel them in the present because we couldn't get away from them. So we're actually at a wonderful time to begin working with emotions as we experience them in the present. And yes, like guilt focuses us on the past. It's like, oh, I did that in the past. I don't want to do it again. I'll feel guilty. 
that focuses us in the past. So we're either focusing on the future or the past and not living in the place where we have power, which is in our everyday present moment, like you and I are having right now. Now, in your work, how did you um, kind of differentiate uh, your psychotherapy and the relationship you have with clients slash patients through that and coaching? Well, the coaching has come later. Uh, my licenses are in California and uh, I can't do therapy with people outside of California. And so I had to move into a vehicle that I could use to help people. And interestingly, I've, I found as I took coaching courses that the way I do therapy is very similar to uh, coaching. I mean, incredibly similar uh, with the idea that it's your life and you get to live it. And I'm here to help you focus and to uh, learn whatever you don't know and put that in place and give you some support and help you structure your, your changes. Uh, so. Uh, that it really wasn't difficult. And uh, I started doing coaching in the early 2000s. But I did, I've been doing therapy since 1972. And then how do you kind of assess which is the appropriate uh, vehicle for the client? Like if, if you were in California still, and they could become an actual client, a psychotherapy client, like how do you go, okay, the coaching route would be work as well for you, or this is something that I think is more appropriate for therapy? Uh, well, um, you know, it's very interesting. Uh, therapists generally, Lee, um, are given the assignment of figuring out for people uh, what they need to do to grow. And that has never been my approach as a therapist in 50 years. I had a therapist myself who didn't operate that way, and it was so powerful. So um, so that's what I'm saying is the therapy is close to it. So I actually ask the people who come to me, you know, I say, look, you're in this place. I can only do coaching. And the difference is that I can't go quite as deep. I can't, uh, you know, go to the uh, to the deep psychological issues. But with an understanding of how things work, we can all work with you know okay so i if you're my coaching client i can say you know anger operates this way perhaps you want to look at what you're angry about and i can give you some uh things to do so that you can look at the anger whereas with the therapy client i could say you know it sounds like you're angry would you like to work with me on that anger right so you're kind of together you're coming up with the appropriate path right and and I do that in coaching or in therapy. And uh, and I have a very, uh, also, I call myself a transpersonal uh, therapist. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what that means is that I have a spiritual defini uh, dimension to my work. Uh, the way I characterize it is I help people to bring their lives into harmony with spiritual principle. Uh, let's just take a simple spiritual principle that everyone is responsible for his or her life. And that's a simple spiritual principle. And what I find is a lot of times people have trouble in their lives and with emotions because they don't take responsibility for what they're doing or making for making change or for taking whatever risk they need to take. Now, when you mentioned earlier that you're a recovered angry person, and now that you've kind of got a handle on that or uh, on the path to mastering or have mastered that emotion, what is the kind of the net benefit that you're feeling that's different about yourself or your life now that you've mastered that? Well, uh, when we are not masters of emotion, the emotion those emotions tend to run our lives. They get out. And so we spend a lot of time mopping up from when they get out of control. And then we spend a lot of our time trying to hold on to them so they don't get out of control again. 
and we go in cycles of doing that. And it's really, I've, I've come to the conclusion that's a waste of time. Uh, the, what happens when you master anger is that it may come up, as I mentioned with loneliness, it may come up and I know, okay, anger is telling me that I have an idea about how things are supposed to be here and that idea is incorrect. So let me look for the idea and let me uh, change my idea. Let me grow with it and learn the lesson. And the other message of anger is to take action. So let me take action on what I learn here. When I do that, I just move right through. There's no buildup of anger. I don't have to control it. I learned the lesson. And as I mentioned before, the minute I learned the lesson, it's over. So I don't have this coming back up again. So ultimately getting in charge of uh, emotions through mastery leaves me in a situation where I'm calm, I'm not stressed. Uh, when something comes up, I know what I need to do to deal with it. When I deal with it, I move on. And the interesting thing about going for mastery is it lasts. So um, it, it's almost like not being angry anymore. Almost, you can't totally get um, get rid of anger uh, of emotions of motion of energy the energy of emotions you can't totally get rid of it. Now, doesn't this require you to have some sort of self awareness that this is an issue, and most people are lacking that that they don't connect the dots that hey maybe I'm angry or they're just like oh my parents were angry so oh this is just normal. Yeah. Yeah, all of the all of the above, and that's part of my quest. I've been working on this since the seventies, you know, sharing what I learned for myself with my clients, and my speaking audiences, and my uh, in uh, my podcast audiences. Uh, the The point now, Lee, is that it is time for us to learn about emotions. We are going through a huge transition, and Part of the transition is that we're recognizing that we're energy beings. So we can't be careless with our energy anymore. There's a big push to get, and people are so aware of emotions. They're erupting on a political level, a national level, an international level, inside of us, in families. And that's why I'm working to get this message out. This is not the way we're intended to live. We're intended to live in harmony with emotions and have those emotions help us. It's like we've gone to school with uh, tools in our backpack uh, that our parents set there for us. And we're here in this giant school and we don't even bother to open the backpack. We don't even know what's inside. And it's time for us to know inside what's inside and it's time for us to use it. And my message is it's more simple than anybody's ever told you. And anybody can do it. Even if you're a kid, you can do this. Now, what are some of the symptoms that maybe you have uh, issues with emotional mastery that you need maybe having someone chat, chat with you about? Is there some kind of signs that, hey, maybe you should kind of investigate this a little bit? Well, of course. Um, well, it depends on how motivated you are to get in charge of your own life, how severe the symptoms or the messages need to be. Uh, if you explode in anger a lot, then you certainly, I mean, you're just messing up your life. Anger that's held inside poisons the vessel that it's in. So you really need to get some help. Uh, it's, I no longer uh, do fear or guilt or jealousy or uh, a number of emotions. And what I mean by that is they take up a minuscule amount of my bandwidth. So if you'd like uh, to have emotions take up a, to work for you the way they're designed to work for you, but still take up a minuscule amount of your bandwidth, then you want to learn to master emotions. If, uh, you know, a lot of us believe that we're supposed to struggle and a lot of us believe if our parents had anger issues, then we have to have them too. Well, we may have learned them from our parents, but we don't have to keep them. 
So this uh, messaging of mine is, and always has been, you know, you can do this, it's important to do it, and here are the tools. Now, if somebody wanted to learn more and uh, maybe talk to you or somebody on your team or get a hold of uh, one of your books, what is the website? Uh, it's emotionalmasteryforlife.com. That's all written out, emotionalmasteryforlife.com. Well, Eileen, thank you so much for sharing your story today. You're doing important work, and we appreciate you. Thank you, Lee. Yes, well, I'm hoping to reach the world with this. I'd like people to have happier more flowing, open, satisfying lives. And this is a route that I've discovered that really takes you there. And you can do it on your own and you can do it every day. Well, thank you again for sharing your story. Thank you, Lee. All right, this is Lee Cantor. We will see you all next time on Coach the Coach Radio. 